history as a driver's car. It is just great fun. On this week's episode of Future Classics, we're going to take a look at the BMW E46 M3. Over the last 35 years, petrol heads have lusted after the M3 model. What started as a homologation special has become one of the greatest sports cars of all time. It was a huge success on the road and on the track. Now, the third generation, the E46 M3, was long been considered the best looking and the closest to what the ideal of an M3 should be, and one of the best driver's cars in the world. When this model was introduced, the car industry was stunned. It had aggressive yet elegant styling, a high revving, powerful S54 engine in it, and that was paired with a six-speed manual or an innovative SMG gearbox. By the time the test started, it confirmed that the rumours were true. It drove just as good as it looked. What really sold this car to people though was at the heart of it, the S54 engine. Now this was a 3.2 inline six, which was giving 343 brake horsepower and 269 foot-pounds of torque. It was fast. Zero to 60 was just over five seconds, which was really pushing on into 911 territory. The engine was innovative. It was high revving. It had an alloy block and head and also electric throttle bodies. But were we to be surprised? It was using the same tech and know-how that was used in the V12 of the McLaren F1. The main thing though was how this car sounded. The engine had the right note and it had the most amazing induction noise. It was a huge hit with people. It just ticked all of the boxes. Like the E36 before it, the E46 kept the somewhat conservative styling notes, but it did still have the widened arches. It had an aggressive front and rear bumper, the distinctive power bulge here. It had the Xenon lights, the 19 inch wheels, and also the quad exit exhaust. It was a great looking car. And by the end of production, they sold 85,766 units, which made it the best selling M3 up to date. Because of their popularity, it meant that the market then took them for granted and the values of these fell as low as £5,000. Many of them were used, abused, drifted even. Because of all of the above, there aren't that many clean examples left of E46 M3s. Uh, my name is Cedric Nixon. Uh, this is my E46 M3 convertible. Um, it's a 2003 model. This car came to my possession. I was sort of, I, I got rid of a Mini Cooper S and um, I'd always been interested in an M3. It's something I'd always wanted another convertible because I'd had two or three BMW convertibles. And um, I started looking at them and some of them were ridiculously expensive, you know, 12,000 miles. And I always knew I was going to modify it and everything because I'd sort of had friends who said, oh yeah, you need to do this, this and this. So I bought a bit of a ropey old car, actually. It was, um, I think, about nine owners. and 93,000 clocks, so I took it straight to a BMW specialist over at uh, Stoke Mandeville, and we did the 100,000 mile service on it. And then we just really got rid of the underneath because, you know, all the dampers and springs. So we, we basically put Einbach um, anti-roll bars in really big ones, um, Einbach springs, and then built Stein kit. And then we also upgraded the brakes. And uh, so it just transformed it, made it a really nice driving car. When you start looking at the choice of convertibles, you know, you've, you've got a lot of old diesels around and things. And I just wanted one that was a nice sounding car. And, you know, when you rev the engine and things, so it's, it's, it's a nice, you know, and it's quite solid as well. I'd had um, convertible BMWs before and they were a little bit scuffled, you know, but not that in, you know, strong. Whereas this one, they seem to have actually got it quite strong. I don't really get scuttle shake. And I think that's probably the first of the uh, BMWs that really, they really sort it out. That the, you know, when you chop the roof off, you lose, you lose a lot of integral um, strength. This car I, I use just as my daily driver. It's, it's just, um, it's, I suppose it's just my, you know, I use it just to sort of go to work or whatever, or just for socializing or doing the shopping. It's, it's just my daily drive. It's, as I said um, initially, it's, it's not, you know, it's not precious. It's, it comes out in all weathers. In fact, wintertime, I've got winter tires go on it. So it's out in the snow and everything. I. I think as a modern classic, it, it deserves it because it, it is, you know, it's, it's a very specialist um, car. I mean, they, they re, you know, the engine's built in a separate plant and they're all hand assembled from what I understand. Generally, people who have them, they generally try to look after them. I mean, you know, a few of them do fall into, 
or they have done in the past, whereas I think now they're starting to appreciate in value. So they're getting owners that can actually, um, you know, will spend the money and, and look after them and have them properly serviced. I prefer the styling of the E46 over the really pared back E36. But this had handsome proportions. It felt tailor-made. This was pre the Chris Bangle shakeup at BMW. This car had bags of style, but then it still had that meanness that every M3 really needs. With the wide arches and the aggressive front and rear bumper, when people were driving this car, they felt like they had got a refined sports car, but at the same time, it still had that little bit of bad boy about it that you 100% need when you're driving an M3. Some would say that the car is conservatively attractive. I know exactly what they mean. This is a car that can still be seen on the roads today, and it doesn't stand out as something that is, as it is, 20 years old. It has a lot of modern sort of vibes to it, but at the same time, it denotes the era of which it came from. One of the things that you notice about the E46 is how well that the cabin is built. It's got great attention to detail. I mean, they've still got the leather upholstery in here. It had an upgraded, decent stereo in it the bright Xenon lights. For the time, this car really was pushing the boundaries. One of the first things that you notice when you're driving the E46 is the noise of the thing. It's that familiar raspy note that you can pick out from a mile away. I remember being young and I would always be able to hear it when you were at a car meet, be like, oh, there's an E46 M3. This is the six-speed manual version. It's convertible too, as you've already probably seen. And the thing about these cars is that they love to be driven. I love the fact that when you're pushing on, you've got quite a lot of torque, especially low down, and it just wants you to push on. I really enjoy how smooth the gear changes are and also the engine on this. Over 300 brake horsepower back then was revolutionary in the sense that you had over 100 horsepower per litre of the engine. This was obviously a 3.2 litre. It was interesting watching videos at the time of journalists reviewing this car. They were stunned. It just totally made sense. And even today, driving it in 2021, the car still makes perfect sense. But the E46 was not completely perfect. The SMG gearbox was not one of the worst, but it definitely let the car down a little bit. I would suggest if you were ever gonna buy one of these to definitely go for the manual version of it. And also, there was a huge problem with rear torque stress. The rear subframes of these cars pretty much decided to chew themselves out of the cars. So that was something that BMW had to sort. And there was a recall done at zero cost. So a lot of cars, you can check to see if this was actually done for them. Once you're keeping it up there on the revs, I mean, this was a high revving engine. It was a completely new concept and pioneer by BMW. It goes all the way to the 8,000 RPMs. That is absolutely magnificent. And the sound that this thing makes when it's singing all the way up there in the rev range, is just addictive. I love that noise. You see, the thing about the E46 at the time was the fact that its competitors couldn't really shine a light to it. They had unrefined chassis. They had boring automatic gearboxes and mind-numbing four-wheel drive systems. In comes the mighty M3, two-wheel drive, all the character and good looks. I mean, what wasn't there to love, really? I know if I was looking to buy a car in the early 2000s, my only option would be an M3. I can understand after driving the E46 today why some people consider it the sweet spot between power, weight and balance. If you're going to buy one, I'd suggest you get one with the six-speed gearbox. There's nothing better than going through the gears and listening to that S54 sing. For a car from the early 2000s, it holds its own amongst its modern counterparts. It's not becoming a future classic, it already is.